We are approaching one of the biggest decisions this country will face in our lifetimes, whether to remain in a reformed European Union or to leave. The question is, will we be safer, stronger and better off working together in a reformed Europe or out on our own? On Monday, I will commence the process set out under our Referendum Act and I will go to Parliament and propose that the British people decide our future in Europe through an in-out referendum on Thursday the 23rd of June. Conservative MP, Kate Godfrey, who is the regional director for the East Midlands Stronger in Europe campaign. I'd like to give them all a nice warm round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. We have a list of questions that we're going to work our way through. First question comes from Daniel Rogers. Considering that we rely heavily on imports from the EU, what will the effects of leaving the EU have on the pound, and therefore industry, in the UK? The UK government and um, directives which have come from the European Union have hindered European trade with the effects of the Climate Change Act, which began as an agreement between the U European nations. It's had a direct impact on the cost of energy in the UK for some time. The point I would make is that the reason why we have a decreasing or an adverse effect on our UK steel industry and other heavy industries is because we have created an environment which is not fit for it. So I would argue that the EU is detrimental at the moment. We need to remove ourselves from it and then we can begin having some of these traditional industries that we used to have come back to these shores and remain on these shores. We could find ourselves in a really challenging place, particularly if, if sterling starts to strengthen with uh, us leaving that eurozone. We could find ourselves with sterling starting to strengthen and then imports be a bit of a challenge as in terms of getting our, um, getting our exports sorry, uh, uh, sold. They're talking about this balance of whether we trade with the EU or whether we trade with someone else. So I think at this point we can bring in Shan Clues with her question because it's relevant. As a percentage, overall trade exports to the EU have dropped 55% in 2002 to 45% in 2014. Do you consider this to be a short or long-term issue and how will the British government deal with this problem if we stay or leave the EU? Uh, we need to continue working with our colleagues in Europe and exporting and, and exchanging goods with them on a, on a regular basis and uh, we need to look to those other markets that have been talked about at the same time and we need to keep uh, encouraging our businesses to engage with the whole world in terms of uh, uh, its trade. Why wouldn't you deal with your nearest neighbours just across the water? Uh, you know, it seems pretty sensible to me to uh, keep that trading relationship open and, and flourishing. I believe that my country, my, my parliament should be sovereign and should make the decisions of this country. We should not be subject to a body outside of the United Kingdom for our lawmaking. We need to take back control of our laws. Okay, well again, you've led us more or less straight into the next question there, which is from Alex Teagan. Estimates say that the percentage of UK laws made in Brussels varies from 15% to 70%. How are ordinary people going to make an informed judgment on whether to stay or leave the EU when reliable information like this is unavailable. Now the, the variation from 15% to 70% uh, depends on whether you're talking about legislation, regulation or directives. And if you talk about a directive, it's something which is decided by, by unelected EU commissioners and then that, that statutory instrument is passed down to the House of Commons and the House of Commons is told that you must pass and create this law. So although it looks like a piece of UK legislation, it's not. It's actually a piece of EU legislation. And what I would argue is that why should we be told which, what laws to make in this country? So some of those laws uh, that have come from Brussels have actually benefited our society a great deal. So the fact that disabled access across this country has improved 
was because the European Union has been cooperating with all of its members to make sure that disabled people. Do you not see what I'm saying? Why do you need to be told by the European Union to look after disabled people? I'm sure we can do that ourselves. If you're a fortunate enough to be here in to look after disabled people, I'm sure we can do that ourselves. If you're unfortunate enough to be hit by a car today, you're much more likely to survive because of the safety improvements that's been made to the legislation across Europe in terms of uh, uh, impact that uh, damage that cars have. These sort of things are what we should be doing and expecting our elected representatives to be d to do in the country, as opposed to having to get someone else to do it. Why can't we do this ourselves? Um, next question we're going to take is from. Would 15,000 UK steel workers be about to lose their jobs and livelihoods if we were not part of the European Union? We know that the steel industry has been really struggling. The problem is, China has produced more steel in the last two years than Britain has produced since the start of the Industrial Revolution. It's so much cheaper to produce metal in China than it is to produce it in Europe. The choice we have is when that is the reality, do we turn our backs on the rest of the world or do we say that's the reality? But the answer is not to say if something can be produced more cheaply overseas that we can just slam down our borders because that will make everything that we make in this country more expensive. But the reality is two years, 200 years. If we uh, were outside of the EU, no, I don't think we would be facing this situation. We could have done exactly the same as the US, imposing massive uh, tariffs because what the Chinese are doing uh, is illegal in terms of the World Trade Organization. So we would be able to impose those tariffs as they have done, as I say, in the United States, as opposed to taking months to do this uh, through EU discussions. But also we could reduce, do things such as reducing VAT. We could do uh, numerous things in terms of removing different tariffs that um, are on steel and makes producing steel in this country more expensive than other parts of, uh, of the world. And we can't do that because we don't have control of our own um, legislation here. OK, uh, first question, please, Luke Driscoll. Evidence suggests that immigration from the EU contributes more in taxes to the British economy than they take out in benefits, while non-EU migrants contribute less in taxes than they take out in benefits. How will leaving the EU solve this problem? In terms of immigration, what we should be moving towards is a more sensible immigration system. If you look at America, for instance, it can discriminate between which immigrants it wants from anywhere in the country, sorry, anywhere in the world, dependent on their skills. I would simply advocate an immigration system which mimics that. Why should we take in unlimited numbers from a particular country, irrespective of the skills that they may or may not possess, at the expense of having highly skilled um, immigrants from outside the European Union. I just think it should be a fair, simple playing field for everybody wanting to come to the UK, irrespective of where you're coming from. There's no country in the world that's negotiated the kind of free trade agreement that they think they do want to see with Europe without having to accept the principle of free movement of labour across Europe. I don't want to see a situation where we are letting people come to the UK before we say to them, you must turn around and you must go home, because I don't think that's fair to refugees who've been through enough. I think we ought to be supporting them on the mainland of Europe and not inviting them to put themselves in more danger. Time for one last question. Alistair Staley, where are you? Given those 100 Premier League football players and 332 players in the top two divisions in England and Scotland came from the EU, what will be the consequence of the greatest football league in the world if we choose to leave the EU? We have a, I understand, a world-class football industry. Um, and if those people uh, were coming here and they, had, and, you know, they were going to be beneficial uh, to the United Kingdom, of course we would have an immigration system which permitted them in, in the same way that if we need additional doctors and surgeons and other healthcare workers, our immigration system could be flexible enough to allow them in. It does emphasise the fact that actually we, you know, we do use talent, not only in football, but across industry from within the European Union, and that free movement of talent has really benefited uh, industry, just as it has the Premier League. You know, I think we, we can proudly say we've got the great greatest league in, in the world. Uh, and that's because of that free movement of talent within Europe.